Hey guys, this is Aaron and I am going to review the Sela Audio Pereza two-way bookshelf speaker. Now I reviewed this speaker on my website about two and a half months ago and I have been meaning to get around to creating the YouTube video for it. Rick Craig, the owner, sent these out to me to review and to post the data up for and said keep them as long as I needed to and I uh, feel terribly bad that it's taken me this long to get to them. So here I am, and because of that, I'm going to have to go through this one a little bit more quickly than I normally do. And um, so also, I don't remember a lot about these speakers, so I'm going to rely on what I have on my website to help me walk through some of that stuff. But what I do remember is that, first of all, these are DIY speakers. They range in price from anywhere to about $1,400 in kit form, where you can buy the parts and build them as needed up to about $28,000, $29,000, $3,000 um, in full completed form. They don't come with the grill, but you can order them that way. Rick provided me a version with baffle step compensation that to my, like, to my liking was a little bit too much, and we'll see that in some of the data. But I will go ahead and address up front that he has already told me that he can, can fix that issue for anybody that wants to order them. It's kind of just... Uh, you know, a build as you need kind of deal. So if you're going to order these to go from him, then he can set them up for you the way that you want them to, or you can tweak the design a little bit if you see fit. But again, these are a DIY type design. They are from a great uh, DIY designer known as Rick Craig in the uh, DIY audiophile community. He is a great resource, produces a lot of great products, and I wanted to give him a shout out and do this video on this speaker. So let's go ahead and get into it. The data here is located on my website, aaronsaudiocorner.com under Sela Audio Pereza Bookshelf Speaker Review. And you can see I did this on September uh, 6th. So here's a picture of the front of the speaker. Now you've got the Pereza speaker has the Purify six and a half inch woofer. And that to date is the best six and a half inch woofer I've tested. It has incredible uh, linearity and the distortion, the, the non-linear distortion is the lowest I've seen to date through the mid-range. I mean, it is really, truly impeccable. Uh, and then it's got this BZ. I'm gonna have to look at this company again because it's not somebody that I was familiar with. BZ Labs CQ76B ribbon planer tweeter. So this is not like a typical um, ribbon tweeter. It's not like a typical AMT. It's, it's a different design. And frankly, it's been so long since I've looked at it, I don't really remember all the details. But you can search it, you can find some information on their website. There's a lot of good stuff here. The bottom line is it is an excellent driver with really good horizontal dispersion. Vertical dispersion is a little bit narrow, but that's just, again, due to the physical height of it. All planar type speakers have this, not gonna say issue, but characteristic. It's just because of the actual physical size, it's taller than it is wider, so it's more narrow vertically than it is horizontally. And Let's see, uh, the sensitivity provided to me from the manufacturer was 84 and a half dB, which is pretty much what I measured. Let's go ahead and skip down to uh, some of the notes. So Rick, again, as I mentioned before, notes that there are no grills that come with this, but you can get them if you wanted to. Uh, this particular finish has an oil finish on it. Uh, he says that's very matte and more in vogue these days. But you can get different uh, finishes on them depending on what you want. So you would just contact him and talk with him about what you're looking to get. And then here's the note I made about how I tested the Purify six and a half inch woofer and how it is an incredible uh, mid woofer. And let's go through some of the results. So the impedance sweep, minimum load is 4.7 ohms. Uh, you're gonna want a separate amplifier. I don't think you're gonna wanna power this through an AVR. Uh, the linearity, let's go down here to the frequency response linearity. Now, you can see that there's this drop off here. And again, this is due to uh, baffle step compensation. I, I hate to use the word overzealous because this was intended by Rick, but after reviewing my results, after talking with him about it, you know, he said this is an easy fix. He can just, you know, flatten this right out. So, what I wound up doing in my listening tests and what I also modeled in the results here is I just added a shelf filter, I think of about a dB or, or 2 dB at around 200, 300 hertz, flatten that right out. Great, no problems at all. So the speaker itself, the linearity on the low end, how it falls off, I'm not concerned with that because that could be easily fixed. Now, if it were a regular manufacturer who was producing these out and you were gonna go on Amazon or Crutchfield or wherever and buy these, 
then that would concern me. But again, if you have DSP or you just talk to Rick, you can easily fix that with one band of EQ or Rick can fix that himself for you. So no issues there in my opinion. And again, the sensitivity was about 85 dB. And then we're gonna go and look at the horizontal off axis response. So you're seeing some peakiness on the on axis response at around three to four K, so about three and a half K. Um, and then some irregularities here, um, a little bit higher than that. Now, my gut tells me that that's diffraction elements, but I don't know 100%, and Rick would have to address that himself. Uh, they're not really a problem, in my opinion, because they're relatively low. But yeah, of course, ideally, those little peaks wouldn't be there. So just kind of take that for what it's worth. Uh, and then this is the spectrogram. So as you can see, the speaker is about 70 to 80 degrees wide horizontally in its radiation pattern. And once it gets about 12K or so, it starts to narrow up. But I mean, 70 degrees wide is typical of this kind of tweeter, um, an AMT or a ribbon type tweeter having a wide dispersion is normal. And so we're seeing that here. That's a, that's a great thing if you like the feeling of being enveloped by sound because wide dispersion typically helps you with that envelopment of sound and width and things like that in the sound stage. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the vertical radiation. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the vertical radiation is a lot more narrow than it is in the horizontal dispersion. And that's again due to the physical size of the, the height itself of the tweeter. And it's about, I'm gonna say at a seven kilohertz, it drops to about 20 to 30 degrees wide. And below that, it, it obviously goes wider. As far as the vertical response goes, I'm not, I don't know. I, my, my honest opinion is that I haven't noticed an issue with having narrowing, narrowing vertical directivity um, as long as you're in the sweet spot. But the problem is that the sweet spot is a lot tighter. So you're gonna have to make sure that that tweeter axis is lined up with your ear very, very well. Cause if you're more than 20 degrees off of that, you're gonna miss a lot of the higher frequency information. So keep that in mind, okay? And let's go blow through this. We're gonna talk about the spinorama data. Now this is all the response measured 360 degrees horizontally vertically rolled up into a single graphic. And what we're seeing here is the directivity looks pretty good. There's some things here and there. Again, the response on the low end drops because of baffle step compensation. Um, but we're also seeing a little bit of a mismatch or directivity drop here between one to two kilohertz. And then there's something going on right around four kilohertz. I'm thinking again that that might be diffraction, but I don't know. The listening window is actually really pretty dang good. I mean, it's within about plus or minus what is that, maybe 2 dB uh, or maybe 1 dB somewhere in there. So it's pretty good, not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. Um, and let's keep going. So I'm gonna blow through some of this. Now, hor harmonic distortion. This is one thing that this speaker does very well. It gets quite loud. I've measured the max SPL up to about 103 dB, uh, but the distortion in the mid range on this speaker is fantastic. It's the lowest I've measured. Um, Maybe next to the Revel F226BE, it might actually beat it. I would have to go back and double check. But having said that, this is a bookshelf speaker and that Revel is a floor standing speaker with two six and a half inch woofers. This has just one. So this guy will do the dang thing as far as output volumes go. If you're sitting far away, you don't have to really worry about that. Pair it up with a good subwoofer at 80 Hertz, good to go. Um, and then the max SPL testing, which I mentioned, I got to about 103 dB at one meter. And then here's the part where I say I used a parametric or a shelf filter, 200 Hertz gain of three and a half DB with a Q of 0.7 and I flattened this baby right out. So, I mean, this made all the difference in the world in, in my ears in my subjective listening test. Um, so I would recommend you do that if you, uh, if you talk to Rick about these and, and you decide to, to purchase this pair of speakers. Uh, let's go on. My listening test, so what did I say about my listening test? This is the in-room response, so you could see what I was hearing measured at my listening position. Okay, a few things that I really noticed about these speakers that they do well better than some of the other speakers that I've tested is the soundstage depth. These have great depth, not just in terms of you know how far away it is from you, but how where the soundstage starts. So let's say if I'm listening and you are the speaker, the soundstage would start, say, here, and it would extend way past me. Um, or I guess I should say it would start here and it would extend way past you, the speaker. So what I mean to say is instead of just starting at this point and kind of going back, it actually comes forward, but it also goes back. So it has really good depth layering. I'll just put it that way. Uh, the mid-range response and the neutrality uh, is, is the best 
it's it's got to be close to the Revel, if not maybe a little bit better than. I mean, it's just it is really truly superb. And and again, I think that's all due to this Purify Wolfram. Well, the only downside about this speaker in that regard is the sensitivity is you know it's it's around the 85 dB mark. But like I said earlier, it gets loud, so it has no problem dumping out a lot of output without any distortion certainly without any audible distortion in my ears and let's see if i mentioned that because normally i try to listen to a certain output volume um uh, let's see i think that when i listen to these in normal conditions um normal conditions being my listening space is about 12 to 14 feet i was getting up to the certainly the mid to upper 90 db output levels no problem at all for these speakers to, to get loud. And if you put a subwoofer on them, they'll get a little bit louder because you won't be stressing them as hard. It kind of makes sense naturally. And uh, baseline, I really enjoyed the baseline. Again, that goes back to the mid range, the upper mid bass, the mid range, somewhere that 160 to 400 hertz region, depending on what bass notes you're listening to. But baseline and wrapped around your finger by stinging the police, or actually just by the police. Uh, was was incredible really really good um, so overall this is a really really great speaker i really and truly enjoyed it i think if you can afford it at its full price and you're not a diy type person i have no problem recommending it and you putting it in your list of potential buys and if you are a diyer then this kind of is to me a no-brainer as well if you've got that kind of budget and you're looking for something but you don't really want to spend the time on building and developing your own crossovers you're just looking for something in a kit form that you can buy and build and enjoy and listen to i would recommend this as a great speaker the mid-range is incredible the horizontal dispersion is incredible that lends itself to great width the depth is really really good the vertical dispersion, again, you're going to want to be in a tighter window than you normally will with a typical dome tweeter because the vertical dispersion is pretty narrow above like 7K or so. And let's see what else I've got here. Yeah, um, bottom line, I recommend the speaker. No real issues in my opinion. It's, it's another speaker for you to put on your list for potential ones to buy. And I would talk to Rick Craig about the speaker if you're interested in it and see what he can do for you. So that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I'm sorry for the brevity, but... Uh, this was kind of a blitz review, and I really wanted to get these back to Rick because I've been hanging on to them for way too long. So, Rick, good job on the speaker. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for sending them out my way and, and giving me the opportunity to audition them. And, um, yeah, you guys enjoy, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.